PLSQL cursor and its types. In this lesson we are going to learn an important concept in PLSQL. We are going to learn about cursors. Let's discuss the cursor and its usage. Here is the definition of a cursor. A cursor is used to process individual rows returned by the database system for a query. Now let's discuss this in detail. Generally, in Oracle, every SQL statement executed by the Oracle server has a private area. This area contains information about that SQL statement and the set of data returned by the statement. In PLSQL, a cursor is assigned a specific SQL area for a specific SQL statement. For example, if you create a cursor for a simple SELECT statement, the server allocates a specific area for that statement. So the result of the statement is stored in that particular area. There are two types of cursors. They are explicit cursor and implicit cursor. Here we will discuss the explicit cursor. The explicit cursor is like a select statement. It stores the result set of the select statement. This type of cursor is declared in the declaration section and used in the execution section. There are three commands used to process a cursor. They are open, fetch, and close. Let's discuss these commands. First, let's see how to declare a cursor. A cursor must be declared in the declaration section before it is used in the execution section. Here is the syntax for declaring a cursor. In this syntax, cursor is a key word. Cursor name specifies the name of the cursor to be created. Declaration. Here we can declare input variables to the cursor. Is is a key word. In the SELECT statement, we can select a set of rows. There, I hope everyone understands cursor syntax. Now we will see the different ways of creating a cursor. We can create a cursor in three ways. Here, we are going to see each type. First, we are going to create a cursor without an input parameter. See this cursor declaration. Here we have declared a cursor named Details Cursor without an input parameter. This cursor selects all the rows from the table Details into its area. Let's see our cursor creation with the input parameter. This cursor is created with the name Details Cursor 1 and it accepts one input value of number type. In the SELECT statement, we have selected the name from the table DETAILS for the role number given by the user. Now we are going to discuss the cursor declaration with the RETURN option. Here, cursor DETAILS CURSOR2 is created with an input parameter and it returns some values. We have used some new variables over here. We will discuss these variables shortly. Here we have learned the three different ways of creating a cursor. We will see how to use this cursor in our program in the next section. Let's see how to open a cursor. A cursor must be opened in the executable section. For this we need to use the command open. We can fetch data from the cursor only after opening it. Here's the syntax for opening a cursor. Open, cursor name, argument, arguments. Here open is a key word. Cursor name is the name of the cursor. Arguments. Well, here we can give input parameters to the cursor. Let's see the list of operations carried out by the open process. First, it determines an execution plan of the cursor. Then, it associates variables and parameters in the SQL statements of the cursor. Then, it determines the set result for the SQL statement. And last, it sets the current row pointer to the first row in the result set. 
Now let's see how to fetch the data from an explicit cursor. A fetch statement is used to fetch the data from a cursor to a local variable. To retrieve all the records from the result set, every row must be fetched to the local variable. And now we will see the syntax for the fetch command. Fetch cursor name into record or variable list. Here, fetch and into are key words. Cursor name is the name of the cursor as declared and opened. Record or variable list specifies the local variables where we want to store data from the cursor. And finally, we are going to see how to close an explicit cursor. In the cursor body, we can do any operations. After finishing the operations, the cursor must be closed using the close command. Here is the syntax for closing an explicit cursor. Close cursor name. Here, cursor name is the name of the cursor. The main reason for closing a cursor is to release the SQL private area used by that cursor. Here is an example of an explicit cursor. In the declaration section, we declared a variable sal as number type, and a cursor named SSS is also declared to select a row from the table details. is 10. After this, the cursor variable readval is created as a row type variable, so it holds the values of that row. In the executable section, the cursor is opened and the value of the cursor is fetched. Implicit Cursor In this lesson, we are going to discuss the implicit cursor. Implicit cursors are not declared like explicit cursors. Whenever an SQL statement is directly used in the executable section of the PLSQL block, you are working with implicit cursors. Implicit cursors are implicitly created whenever insert, update, delete, and SELECT2 statements are executed in our program. There is no need to declare, open, fetch, or close an implicit cursor. Implicit cursor supports all explicit cursor attributes. We can refer to the implicit cursor attributes through the SQL cursor. With explicit cursors, we must use the cursor name with the attributes. When we execute a SELECT statement which does not return any rows, PLSQL immediately raises the NO DATA FOUND exception. When a SELECT statement returns more than one row, PLSQL immediately raises the TOO MANY ROWS exception. Here we will see a program which uses an implicit cursor. Look at this program. used the update statement inside the executable block of a PLSQL program, so an implicit cursor is created automatically. In the update statement, we have updated the job title column in the employee table. Here we have used the attribute not found to check whether the cursor is created or not. We have used this implicit cursor via SQL. Here the row is updated and inserted into the department table. In this section we are going to discuss cursor variable. Let's start our discussion with its definition. A cursor variable is a data structure which points to the cursor's result set. We can use cursor variable to retrieve rows from the result set more easily. The syntax for creating ref cursor variable type is type ref cursor name is ref cursor return record type to use cursor variables we must first create a ref cursor type this syntax shows the creation of a new ref cursor type we need to create a ref cursor declaration with a return clause this defines that a query will return some rows at runtime let's see an example to declare this cursor variable Explicit Cursor Attributes and Loops. 
In this section, we are going to discuss explicit cursor attributes and how loops are used with the cursor. In the sample program, we have selected only a single row for a cursor. Here we will see how to fetch a set of rows and manipulate them with the use of loops. There are four attributes associated with the cursor. They are is open, found, not found, row count. Now we will see the syntax to use a cursor attribute. Cursor name percentage attribute. Here cursor name specifies the name of the cursor and a percentage symbol is used with the attributes. Now we will see in detail each cursor attribute. Is open. This attribute is used to check whether the cursor is already open or not. This attribute will return the value true if a cursor is open, otherwise it returns false. Found. This attribute will return true when a record was fetched from the table, and it returns false when the record was not fetched from the table. If the cursor is not opened or is already closed, then the value is returned as an invalid cursor. Not found. This attribute will return true when there is no record to fetch. It returns false when the record was fetched successfully. If a cursor is not opened or is already closed, the value will return as invalid cursor. Row count. This attribute is used to return the total number of rows fetched by the customer. It also returns the value invalid cursor when the cursor was not opened or was already closed. Now we will see how to use these attributes in a program. Take a look at this program. In this program we have created a cursor with the name C1 by selecting rows from the table details. In the executable section we used our cursor attributes to find the details of a cursor. Here we have used cursor attributes is open, found, and row count in our program. And finally we have closed our cursor. Let's execute this program. As a result of this execution the program displays the total number of rows. In this section we have discussed different cursor attributes. In the next section we'll discuss how to use loops in a cursor. Here we will see how to use a simple loop in a cursor. Simple loop is used with the cursors to determine whether any rows are left out while fetching the rows. To determine the status of a cursor, cursor attributes need to be checked. We have already discussed these things in our previous lesson. Here I will show you a simple program which uses a loop. See this program. Here we have used a simple loop in our cursor to fetch the values. Here we have also used percent not found attribute to check whether the rows are fetched from the cursor or not. Whenever an exit condition becomes true, the loop is terminated. Finally, the values are inserted into a new table. And finally, the loop and the cursor are closed. Here we used a simple loop in the PLSQL block. Now we are going to use the for loop in cursor. See this syntax. In this program, we did not use open and fetch commands. 